Time is just flying by so fast. How are we approaching the end of the first month of 2024 already? So much has happened and I have been incredibly busy the last few weeks. Not only just this month, but the last two months. It's been go, 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 go in the reptile room, working on cleaning, enclosure upgrades, different projects, the tree monitor build, and more. One of my favorite ways to communicate with you guys is through my YouTube community page. And it's one of the places that I ask you plenty of questions about what we wanna do next on the channel. Maybe it's new video ideas, polls for different subjects, questions about where to travel next in the world, all sorts of stuff. And so a few weeks ago, I asked you all how you'd feel about doing a once a week feeding video. I'm calling it Feeding Fridays on Reptiliatus channel where we'll do a feeding video, whether it's uh, feeding all my snakes, feeding all my frogs, feeding all my turtles, feeding all my jumping spiders, feeding all my lizards, feeding all my geckos. There are so many opportunities and there might even be videos where we just feed everybody or a mix of different animals in the reptile room. Well, the results of the poll were very clear. The majority of you who are willing to vote are very enthusiastic about seeing a weekly feeding video on Fridays. Now, currently most uploads have only been on Fridays, but I am working my way up to posting two times a week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. For now, it's mostly just gonna be Friday uploads and it'll rotate between different kinds of content. But very soon, thanks to your participation in making the decision, we're going to be doing Feeding Fridays on Reptiliatus, like I said. And so every Friday, you can count on seeing many of the animals I keep through a feeding video. I hope that's something you're excited about. I'm pretty excited to see how it's gonna go and I look forward to sharing my animals with you in that way. Let's get into it. Now, if you're new here, my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets, such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Like we sort of discussed, I do my best to post one video a week, soon to be two, and I also post several YouTube shorts. Awesome. Let's get into the video, guys. There's a lot of animals to be fed, and I think you're gonna have a good time observing. In today's feeding video, we're gonna be using an assortment of different feeder insects to feed my pet reptiles and amphibians. Everything from hornworms, giant discoid cockroaches, superworms and crickets, it's all going to be offered to the animals, even frozen thawed quail chicks for various critters. If that's something you don't wanna see, it's a little disturbing to you, please, be weary that there will be some of that in the video. Uh, perhaps we can offer a little disclaimers. Matt, my good man, sir, if you don't mind. Thanks, buddy. Now remember, before we feed our feeders to our pets, it's very important to gut load them. Let me know if you guys want me to do a video on how to properly gut load your feeder insects. Because that's a really important step that has to do with properly feeding your reptiles. And a lot of people overlook it and don't do any of it altogether. So the first animal we're going to feed here is Basil, the green tree monitor lizard. And we're going to give him a nice juicy hornworm caterpillar. Oh, he missed. Oh, he got it. There he goes. Oh, juicy. Holy moly, look at that. Oof. All right, Basil. This is my female blue beauty, Anol Anolis Equestris Portior. See if she would like to eat a cockroach. One of the nice, juicy, gut loaded ones. Oof. That is a yes. Very happy, Anol. Now, the problem is she might just hold it like that for quite a few minutes before chewing and swallowing it. So, we'll leave it at that and try and feed my male who sees that we're feeding her and is just freaking out because he wants to eat. <laughs> Want a cockroach too? got some pretty strong teeth. They actually eat a lot of other gnolls and small lizards besides just insects. So they have quite powerful jaws and they are also very good at eating prey, larger than you would expect them to be able to take. Okay, next up is Tiki and Torch, the toke geckos. Let's go ahead and see if someone will come out for this worm. Anybody home? Mr. Teeks. Torch is over here. Okay, but where's Tiki? There he is. Look, Tiki, look what I got. There's no way you don't. Yeah, Mr. Teeks, come on. Look at this 
juicy big hornworm caterpillar. Oh my goodness. Telling me you don't want to eat that? Come on over, buddy. Come on. Oh no, now Torch is watching too. <laughs> Come on, bud. Come on. Up you go. Look at this guy. All right. Here you go, Tiki. Torch, you gotta watch out. She'll go for your fingers. She's not always as careful. <laughs> Alright, here you go, Tease. Ooh! Here you go, buddy. Go for it. Oh, boy. Nice job, dude. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, so I have this juicy, clearly gut-loaded cockroach nymph this is a false discoid which is finally a completely legal legal not illegal cockroach species that you can use as feeder insects in canada so it's very exciting for us excuse me ma. torch come on oh she's right there oh okay girl she got it yeah she got it wow okay so not the best shot, but there she is with her cockroach. All right, that kind of sucks, but those toke jaws don't play around. Oof, 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 oof. All right, little lady, enjoy your meal. Let's move on. Okay, here we have, hey, she's actually out. It's honey and sappy, the red-eyed crocodile skinks, triple anotis gracilis. And we're going to offer them one of their favorite foods. They seem very, very fond of beetle larvae. And this is the Zophobus morio, otherwise known as the superworm in the pet trade. So it becomes a nice sort of darkling beetle as an adult. But in this case, unfortunately, it's going to become food for our beloved Sappy. Hey Sappy, look what I got. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at this lovely lizard. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not food, what are you doing? Oh, big yawn. Oopa. That was pretty cute. Yes, up you go. Just don't bite my fingers, please. Here. <laughs> that was really cute. Sappy, you are hilarious, girl. She's way back here, munching and crunching on that uh, soup worm. And Sunny, it's gotta be somewhere around here too. Sunny, is that you? It is. Hey, bud. You're gonna have to give me something, dude. I'm not just handing this to you. Come on, you can do it. Come on, buddy, you're so brave. Yeah, good job. No, <laughs> come back. Don't you try to trick me. Come on, I know you can do this. Come on, yep, you're so close. This is all it is, guys. It's just baby steps like this. Oh, you cheeky, cheeky monkey. When, when he doesn't do that, when he doesn't do that, we just get them to come a little bit closer and then and then they slowly build the tolerance. They build the understanding that this is safe, that it's a safe space and, and there's nothing to worry about. And then you end up with a crocodile skink like Sappy who just runs onto your hand for food. Awesome. Ah, oh, Sabzi. She went through her soil. Sabzi, come on. I just cleaned her water and it's already messy. I have a totally new system for water dishes going into the new enclosure. I'm excited to use them because it's going to keep their water clean thanks to my friend Greg. But right now we're feeding Sabzi some frozen thawed quail chicks. These are button quails. And once in a while she gets to eat these and she absolutely loves them. It's not particularly healthy for tree monitors to have to eat rodents. They can eat them here and there, but when it comes to the birds, think about it, it's probably more natural for a tree monitor. Yep, she loves these so much. Mm mm mm. And the button quails are perfect because they're just small enough that they don't really struggle to eat them. As you can see, they're pretty tiny. So she'll finish this one and then we'll give her one more right after. Tasty. Good girl. It's always so weird just seeing the legs stick out. Okie doke. Let's give her one more. I usually wait a little bit. She does some of that neck turning, moving it. See, like that. Wait till it's actually down. Because if I don't, she'll still come running for food. And it might not be the best thing for her. All right, let's make her run a little bit for this one. Come on. Yep, yep, yep. Come on over. It's going crazy. Where is it? Where'd it go? Come on. There you go. Come on. 
I don't know what I did there. I think the door made a funny noise and it spooked her. <laughs> Sorry, girl. This is weird. Does not happen often with this girl. She's quite comfortable. Oof. Perfect. Girl, Sabzi. Awesome. There you go. She got to eat some nice quails. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, out of all your pets, whether they're furry friends or scaly, which of those animals is your favorite to feed? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. For me, man, that's hard. The Phyllobates terribilis are pretty cool, but few things beat feeding a tree monitor. Those reaction times are kind of scary and intense and very, very entertaining. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, guys, we have not seen these animals in a pretty long time and exciting things are happening soon. I have upgraded enclosures uh, that we're gonna be setting up and moving them into in the next coming weeks. Uh, this is Nib, my female rhinoceros rat snake. That's the Goniosoma bulangeri. And you can see that she's starting to go green. I can't believe that I haven't given you guys an update on these animals since I got them. It's kind of insane. But yeah, they're doing amazing. So yeah, that was Nib, like I said. Like a nice pen, right? And then here is Pinocchio, my male. And he is not looking very happy right now. He looks like he would be very happy to bite me. But instead of me, I'm hoping we can get him to eat some quail. So we have some quail left here. The two small chicks are going to be for Nib and Pinocchio. And the large one there is gonna be for Kira, my female Mexican kid and black king snake. All right, Pinocchio, come on, buddy. You hungry? Oof. Pretty good. There you go. Took him a sec. Oof, where are you going with that, sir? Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, they, they move fast. Take their time to swallow their food. It's so funny, they literally have like a nose. You enjoy your quail. Sometimes I'll do this a little bit so it's like animated, but I'm not gonna bother with him. We'll give Nib hers. She is usually the most aggressive eater out of the two. Let's see if she wants one. She's like, don't touch me. Her tongue is also flicking, so I know that she's intrigued to say the least. Come on, Nib. I think we're in business here. It's like she's trying to get away, but as soon as she actually turns and finds the food, I'm confident that she'll go for it. Oh no. Now she's in Pinocchio's enclosure. <laughs> Maybe that was a mistake. Uh, Pinocchio. Okay, well, we're gonna let her move in. I have to wait till her whole body's through because I can't close this door. Oh, yeah, yeah, girl. You're making things complicated. Okay. Let's try this again, shall we? Let's try this again. She is grumpy though, holy. Nib. I think we need to get her to settle down a little bit and come back and revisit. And of course your water dish is already dirty. Ay ay ay, Nib. Okay, let's feed Kira and try Nib again afterwards. Okay everybody, this is Kira, my female Mexican black king snake. You may remember the tutorial I did on how I set up her enclosure. This girl hasn't eaten in a few weeks. So we're gonna go ahead now and see if we can coax her out with a meal. Kira, she's usually hidden in the back of the terrarium, somewhere over here. Well guys, I found Kira. She's in her hide here. So I think we're set to try and feed her. I'm sure she'll come out probably very enthusiastically. Yep, here she is. Whoa, I was not expecting that. Oh boy. <laughs> okay then. So much for trying to film <laughs> what would happen next for you guys. Yeah, I can't really uh, follow her down in there, unfortunately. All right, uh, I guess we'll move on. All right, we're gonna try Nib again here. See if anything's changed. Nib, come on. Yes, thank you. Come on, girl. Come bearing gifts. 
Okay, so Nib is not interested in eating, clearly. So we're gonna go ahead and give this to a Pac-Man frog. Don't worry, she's totally fine. She'll probably just wanna eat next week. Time for a quick break to thank my patrons over on the Patreon platform. Guys, thank you so much for supporting this channel. Patrons have helped in so many different ways, whether it's helping to fund different expeditions and more. There's so much that goes into planning expeditions and my patrons help with that. Vet visits and more, patrons help support. You guys are amazing. And by doing so, you unlock a whole slew of perks, such as a direct line of communication with me for all your reptile-related questions. We do Q&A videos. And by the way, we're gonna be doing one soon, so consider becoming a patron and dropping your question in the chat quick, because I'm gonna be making that video shortly. And every patron gets a shout out in a video. So today, we're going to be thanking our new patrons. <coughs> Let me get my phone here. Since the last time I did a video shout out. Today, we are thanking Kelly, Amy, and Joseph. Thank you so much, guys, for becoming my newest channel patrons over on the Reptiliatus Patreon page. I look forward to conversing with you more there, and we can get to know each other better. Thank you, everybody, for your consideration, and thank you again to the Patreon supporters. Let's get back to today's video. Okay, guys, well, Lunchbox is currently estivating. She's cocooned up in skin, layers of dry skin to retain moisture, so she is not around to eat larger stuff that other animals won't eat. But Avocado here, my... Ceratophrys, Suriname horn frog, eat this little quail chick. I have no doubt. Yep, she's already interested. Give her a little bit more of a hunt than just uh, sit there and eat. Ooh, almost. Ooh. Just about. This frog's hilarious. Oh, nope, that's a leaf. I'm gonna give you a hand, okay? Let's, let's try it again. Once more. There you go. And again, sometimes I'll animate the prey a little bit. The frog is actually kind of struggling as if it's something alive trying to get away. I think that's a bit more natural. Good source of calcium and prey like this. Avocado is a tiny little froglet at one point. Now she's eating birds. Please keep your water dish clean for as long as possible. I would be so grateful. All right, let's move on. Next we have this other Ceratophrys cornuta. Uh, I actually have a name this one, but we're gonna give it a calcium dusted hornworm. And this one's pretty chunky. Let's see what they make of it. Oomp. Just like that, it's almost gone. <laughs> yeah, that didn't take long at all. Okay, everybody, now we're gonna go ahead and feed my poison dart frog. So we put some calcium uh, in the bottom of a cup. And we have a nice busy culture here of Drosophila. These aren't actually Heidi, I don't know why it says Heidi, they're Melanogasters, but a uh, little drum solo to get them off and away from the top of the cup. We put the, that was a subscriber that gave me that tip, put the calcium first, and we tap the flies in, just like that. And then what we can do with that calcium is just swoosh them around and then they can't climb up the sides. Because these flies are flightless. They're genetically modified not to be able to fly. So they're walks. <laughs> Get it? Because they're not flies. Look at that. Terrible humor. I try to make that joke every time until someone acknowledges it in the comments. There you go. You can see all these calcium coated flies. We're gonna go ahead now and offer them to some of my dart frogs. So this terrarium. Here houses my Ufaga pumilio, the blue jeans. It's quite grown in, as you can see. We're gonna go and drop some flies down and around this area. I know my male is usually somewhere back there. He likes to hide in that, we call it. And the female's always in this cocoa hut. So let's see if they come out neat. Okay, we'll put some flies here. And then I'll put a few over here too, close to the front. And now you guys can cross your fingers that we're gonna see some cute little poison dart frogs. <laughs> Just chasing flies. Cool. Just tied it. Okay, so these are my Dendrobates Tinctorius Azurius. The blue dying frogs. They're not dying, that's just what they call them. Let's go ahead and drop some 
fruit flies in here and watch as they come to the front of the tank to feed. You'll see them in the back. You can already see some blue coloration. They're making their way over. Aren't they just incredible? Probably one of the most blue and beautiful animals on our planet. My oh my. They are quite something. And they're pretty bold dart frogs too, as you can see. Like they're right at the entrance. I'm coming right up to them and filming them and they don't mind whatsoever. Very bold, very easy to take care of. Very good beginner pet frog, especially for a poison dart frog, if that's what you want to keep. They made pretty quick work of those flies. So let's give them a few more. There we go. That's the female. So this is my female that I got from understory. And then I have this male here who's unrelated. And then those ones, those two young guys there, they're a bit younger. Those are two males that I uh, raised up from tadpoles that were produced by Lazuli and Cyani. So it's a nice little group. Uh, I will most likely be rehoming those extra males. This is a little crowded in here, but they are at least getting along. It's just that I have to feed them a lot because there's four frogs in here. Okay guys, here's one group of my Cynodactylus. Cynodactylus, these are the elegant geckos or short-fingered geckos. You can see some of them hiding in here. Uh, there's a few over here as well. And for some reason there is a cricket in their water that's just like stuck. We'll go ahead now and offer them some food. See if this little guy wants a mealworm. Watch this. Boom! Oh, okay. Try again, little guy. You really do like a death roll. <laughs> Holy macaroni. You are not stealing his dinner. I will feed you, I promise. Our little companion is going to finish his mealworm in peace. I think that's kind of wholesome is these guys actually will eat tiny little prey. Uh, these are just fruit flies. And despite how tiny they are, they still take an interest. You'll see they'll run over and grab the tiny little morsels. They're so small and insignificant, but they still enjoy it. And sometimes I honestly feel like they're more receptive to eating this sort of food than uh, larger prey. It's really random. They seem to like it and I'm all for it. It's variety, right? We're gonna go ahead and offer them a few mealworms. You still prefer the flies, eh? Going for the flies again. Oh, okay, then there we go. Another mealworm. Got it. I'll put a few more here, see if any others want to have a mealworm. I imagine they will. Here we go. Good stuff. We got one more here. And anyone want to eat that? Same gecko got it. Awesome. Here is a female Cynodactylus petrii, Egyptian sand gecko. Give her a few crickets. Not playing around, that's for sure. There's one cricket left in here. I have a feeling she's gonna find it quite quickly. Oui. Fantastic. Cynodactylus petrii. This is Leela, my Rachidactylus lichianus. We're gonna go ahead now and offer her a mix of different fruits, protein. Let's see what she thinks. Hi Leela, would you like some diet? Mmm, yes you would. Tasty. How's that? You enjoying that? All right Leela, why don't we put you back in your enclosure and see if Jabba wants to eat. Don't worry, you can keep eating. We'll just do it in your tank. All right, a few more licks and then we'll, I'll put you back. Okay, Leela, come on, you're good. I'm gonna bring this to your home. Here, let's bring you back. Let's bring you back home. Gonna bring the light over. Hey Jabba, back you go. All right, good, now we got the light over here and we can offer Jabba a hornworm. What is up with this guy? <laughs> he was very interested for a sec. All of a sudden it's like he's not sure. Leela, what about you? When you're home, you usually eat these. Yeah, now you want that. <laughs> uh, 
Lila. Okay, well, that was fast. Mr. Jabs, I have something for you. Here you go, buddy. Here you go, little man. Get in there, have some. All right, she's eating plenty, so we'll put another dish here. Either he's gonna go to it or she is, but there's lots of food there. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna feed my Cruzio Hila Crespidopus. Hello there. Okay, we're gonna feed you now. So as I've said before, usually what I do is I'll tongue feed the frog a few crickets and then the rest they just catch on their own. Wow. There you go, bud. Good stuff, very good. And then as I said, I'll just kinda toss a few in like that and you can find them later. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's feeding video. Go ahead, buddy. And uh, yeah, if you wanna see more feeding videos, check out the playlist up above here. I can't wait to see you all next week for an upcoming video. Something is in my eye, it's itchy. Maybe uh, some super warm juice. And he just bit that. Ugh. But uh, alas, I digress. Can't wait to see you all for an upcoming video again soon. Have a wonderful weekend. And yeah, feed your animals. They're hungry. Go now. This should inspire you to go feed them. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.